Hello friends of the T-Woods, Chill Dragon back in business today with another episode about T-Woods coding. Woohoo! Okay, so today we're going to talk about some server-side modifications and about game controllers, a bit of like how you can hook into the code and how you do your server-side modifications properly. So if you're working on the client, this episode is not interesting for you and you can skip it. If you're working on the DDoS network code base, then this won't work for you as of right now. I don't think they will change it in the near future. So they already kind of hijack the game controller and they force you to use the DDoS network or like the DDoS game controller. So you can't really create your own. That's a bummer. Anyways, but if you're working on a T-Words vanilla source code based uh, modification, then and it's server side, then this one, this episode is exactly for you and it will be really exciting. Okay, so let's get right into it and let's open the code. Okay, as you remember, we have our folder structure here with base, engine, game, master server, OS X, launch, test, tools, version server. And the most interesting folder, if you want to do some high level modifications in client or server is the game folder. As you remember, we also touched the base folder. Well, we didn't edit something there, but we used functions from there, uh, like the string formatting uh, stuff, all the stuff that's working with strings and networking and even files is somewhere uh, defined in the base in the base folder. Anyways, so let's have a look in the game folder. And we are interested in the server folder inside of game. As I told you, this one is server side only. And in here we have game modes. And as you can see, here we have listed all the game modes of T-Words that we know and love. It's like Capture the Flag, Deathmatch, Last Man Standing, Last Team Standing, and Team Deathmatch. And we also have a special one here that you maybe not know yet, and it's called Mod. So, let's have a look in here. In uh, Mod.cpp, it's located under Game, Server, Game Modes, uh, Mod.cpp, or Let's use my favorite shortcut, it's Ctrl P and type in mod.cpp or even type mocpp and it will also find it because it's awesome. Um, right, okay, so as you can see this file does not have a lot of content. We have a constructor here. A constructor is a special function of a class which will be called once when the object of the class is created. So like a class is basically a blueprint of like a data type and if you then create a variable using that data type you instantiate one object of that class. So a class alone is only a blueprint and does nothing if you want to actually execute code of that class and call uh, member functions of that class you need an instance of the class. And if you create one instance of a class you can create as many instances of classes as you want um, but in this case those controllers are only instantiated once because we only need one uh, controller. That's totally fine for us. But as soon as this controller is being created, the constructor of this class is being called. So this function here is a special function. As I said, it's a constructor. So it will be called if we create the game controller. And it does some setup code here. Line 10 is super interesting because this string will actually be displayed in the server browser and in the server information. This is like the, the name of the modification, actually. Um, down here it's also advertising in a comment that we can activate teams, we can also activate flags and that's about it I think um, that the game flags have. Maybe there's also some survival stuff, I don't know. So here we can do some basic configuration and down here we have another function. It's called tick and it suggests it's being called every tick and that's how it is. So that's pretty cool because we can already go in-game, start a server without touching the source code and switch to the game type mod and then this code will be executed every tick and we can put our logic in here. Okay, so um, let's have a look at uh, mod.h. So as you can see, we have these two functions, the constructor. Uh, you can recognize the constructor because it has the same name as the class. So the function name of the uh, function is the same name as the class. So the class name is cgamecontrollermod and the name of this function has the same name and it has no data type. That means this function is the constructor. Below here we have a 
a void function which is tick so void means it returns no data it just executes and has like side effects you put all the tick logic in there um, yeah okay so that's it let's have a look at where this game controller is being created so as i told you this class alone won't do anything you need a actual instance of the class to run the code and the way that you instantiate classes in C++ is you type in new and then the class name. And as we can see, if we search the whole source code using Control shift f um, that it's being done in gamecontext.cpp. Game server gamecontext.cpp, we have the check depending on the config variable as we game type. So if we control click that, we can see it's defined in variables.h it's this one up here so maybe you saw that already if you're a server administrator you can type in s sv underscore game type in the recon console and it's default deathmatch and you can change it to those values whoops to those values deathmatch team deathmatch ctf and so on what is not listed here is the game type mod but you can actually if you look at the code um, already set the game type mod in any vanilla server because it's already coded in here and supported. So if the uh, recon config variable uh, game type is set to mod, it will instantiate a game controller mod. Otherwise it will use the CTF controller, the last man standing controller and so on. And in this line, we call the constructor because we create an instance of this object. And this is being called uh, in game context on init. So if the game context is initialized, we um, like check which controller we need and that's also the reason why you have to do uh, a reload after you change the game type because this code is only picked up if the game context is being initialized and it's only being initialized if you restart or reload the server okay so far so good so what can we do now so let's control click back in here so we have our um, mod.cpp okay so let's put some code in here what can we put in here um i was thinking about well let's do it it's a bit spammy but we can print something in the tick so let's do a dbg underscore message and do like my mod and say like hello from mod tick just to check if this code is actually being called. So it's always nice to double check, even though you expect this function to be run, to actually check, hey, is it actually running? And do some testy printing before you code like some big ass modification in there and it, the code doesn't even run. Okay, so let's see if we can get line 21 to be executed. So as we read in the code, we have to change the game type to mod and then it will create and use this game controller. Okay, so let's get right into it and build the server. Okay, wonderful. After it built, we want to run the server. So we do TWL server and we can specify a recon command if we put it as an argument. So we can do sv underscore game type mod in here. Uh, if you are on Windows and maybe you start your server with a double click uh, like on the exe from your file explorer you can right click open a terminal there and also launch your server dot exe from the command line you do something like dot backslash t words server dot exe and then you do sv underscore game type mod right it's pretty much the same or you just open a client log in and uh, change the game type via the admin console and then you have to reload okay so let's do that Let's launch a server and do sv underscore game type mod. And as you can see, we get spammed in the log every fucking tick with hello from mod tick. So our code is being executed and that's very nice. Okay, so what's the advantage of doing it this way? So first of all, it's nice to be in your own file instead of editing the game context file that is nice for like basic structure so you know where to find your code and if you update with the upstream for example if you want to get in some new keywords updates in here and they change the game context it's much easier to update your game context 
if you'd never edited it. So that's a huge win. So I highly recommend you to always use uh, your own files to use the mod.cpp file. Cool. Okay, so maybe before we get right into it, let's do some changes. Let's say you want to uh, do some branding and your mod is actually not called mod, but you have some kick-ass name for it. And as you already know, our kick-ass mod is called my mod, which is such a neat name and it's totally different. So we definitely have to rename that file. Okay, so let's rename those files. You can do it in VS Code. You can do it in your file browser. You can do it wherever you want. Here you can just press F2 to uh, rename. Okay, so to rename the file, we have to do a, a few changes. You can see in the mymod header, in the mymod.h file, we have a include guard here. And the include guard is based on the file name. So it's good style to also to update the file name in here. Okay, so that's that. So as we can see, we have a include of mod.h and my mod.cpp. So we have to rename that one as well. Okay, and there are probably more includes. To find them all, we do a control shift F and we search for mod.h in quotes and there are no more includes. Okay, never mind, but just gotta be sure. So that's fine. Um, okay, so maybe we also want to rename the controller. That also works. And then let's rename it here. And then we have to rename it here as well. Any other occurrences of mod in here? No, that's fine. So let's go to the CPP file again. And bam. By the way, I'm pressing Ctrl D here if I mark some text. And so that gives me a cursor on all these occurrences. Just some VS Code hacks. Anyways, uh, do we have any? Yeah, this one. Okay. We can also look in the whole source code again. Do we have any instances of my mod? Well, of course, in game context where we create an instance of our class, we definitely have to update the class name as well. Uh, not 2M, but my mod. Yes, like this, wonderful. And this string uh, is actually even more important because that's the string that's being matched against the configuration. So this is the one that the admin has to type in. Renaming the class has actually no impact on the users or administrators. So this is just for us developers so that we brand our controller in the code. But this one is the actual configuration that the user is typing in. Okay. Cool, let's have a look. Uh, I type 2M in here. Wonderful. Uh, so that looks good. Save all the files and see if it builds. It doesn't. Oh, we have one include of mod.h. I wasn't searching properly. So as you can see, uh, it says fatal error. Uh, game modes mod.h, no such file or directory. So in game context, in line 20, it's trying to include the file game modes slash mod.h, which does not exist because we renamed it. So let's go to game context to line 20. By the way, you can press Ctrl G and then type in a line number and we'll go there. Wonderful. And here we want to update it to my mod. Wonderful. So let's see if it builds now. It still does not build and What's happening here is, this one is more tricky. This is actually not an error in our source code, but in our build system, because we are building with CMake, and CMake has all the file names specified in a CMake lists file. So the CMake lists file, so let's open a file explorer. We are inside our build folder. If we go one folder up, can we get this bigger? No, I can't make it bigger. If we go one folder up, um, Here's our source folder, here's our build folder, and there we have a file called cmakelists.txt. We want to open that boy with VS Code and search for mod.cpp. And as you can see, every fucking file in the whole T-word source code 
is specified explicitly in the cmakelist.txt file. You can also do some automated globbing and stuff. Trust me, build systems are capable of doing that. But it was some design decision in, um, made by the t developers that um, it has some advantage. I actually don't know why. Maybe it's like to differentiate between different folders, pack them in different bundles. Don't ask me. But you have to specify every file name in here. And since we updated the file name, we have to also update it here. So as you can see, we have my mod and my mod.cpp. If you're using the BAM build system, this one has globbing activated. So I mean, globbing means like recursively like matching all files, so to say. So it picks up all the files for you. So if you only build with BAM and you don't care about other developers who want to use CMake, you don't have to do that step. But I highly recommend you, um, even if you are building on BAM, uh, to also maintain the CMake build system if you uh, if you feel motivated and enough, and if you expect future developers to join your project, maybe they don't have BAM installed, and it's always nice. Anyways, so we have to rename the file here. Also, um, be careful if your mod name does not start with an M. For example, if you called your mod like uh, awesome mod, then you would have to put it up here because this one is sorted alphabetically and it will actually yell at you if you don't sort it alphabetically. So um, keep that in mind. Uh, whoops. So it's my mod dot cpp and my mod dot h. Wonderful. So after we change the CMake list file, we want to um, run cmake dot dot again and regenerate our cmake uh, files. As you can see, build files have been written, that's totally fine, so all good. Uh, for example, if you were to, I don't have it open anymore, if you were to mess up the order, what it would say is like, bam, warning, um, game server is not alphabetically sorted. So this is what you see if you mess up your alphabet, which happens and then it's super sad. And uh, I think it actually might work, but yeah, just sort it. Okay, so that's good. And now you can build it again. And this time we get no errors. And we successfully renamed the uh, config that you type in the file that was tricky because we had to update includes and um, CMake list and we also renamed the controller. Cool. So let's see if it still works. And let's run keyword server sv underscore game type. And this time it's no longer mod, but it's my mod. And all is working fine. Wonderful. Okay, cool. So let's get right into it. Um, after all the setting up, let's do some coding. And as you can see in the mymod.h file, it advertises in line 14, add more virtual functions here if you wish. What is this virtual function magic? Um, so the stuff that is happening here is some crazy object-oriented paradigm. It's not called paradigm, is it? I don't know, whatever. It's OP going on. That means we are inheriting, so this colon in C++ after the class name, means we inherit from a interface called game controller. That means that we kind of you know that's like our daddy class and it holds a lot of functions already and we can kind of use them. And every time something happens, some type of event, for example, the tick event, but also like a, play, a player joining, a player leaving, a player dying, stuff like that, a function on the controller is being called. And it will also call this function on our controller if we create it. So as you can see, um, where the controller has been created in gamecontext.cpp, my mod, as you remember, we are creating our controller in here and then we save our controller in this variable. So this is a MP controller 
it means it's like a member variable on game context. It's a pointer to an instance of a controller class. And it could be like different controller classes. So it could be my controller, it could be a CTF controller and so on. And then if we search for my underscore P controller and the whole source code and use the pointer syntax to see what it's calling, we can see it's calling a lot of um, functions on here. For example, tick, uh, which we define, so that's totally fine. But it's also calling on player ready change. It's also calling. Uh, it's also coding a bot warm up and all this function that we never defined. And those functions are actually defined in um, the the base class that we inherit from. So if we control click that boy, we can see it defined all the functions and we inherit from it so we also have those functions automatically in our controller that's why we can um, call them on our controller but what we can do now is override those functions and implement our own logic in here so let's give that a try i think a simple function would be um, on uh, on character spawn that looks good doesn't it okay so we can control click on character spawn and as you can see it's defined in gamecontroller.cpp so let's have a look how it's defined in gamecontroller.h on character character spawn okay so um, as you remember we already have to find the method tick that we can find in here so um, this is a virtual void tick and we have that one here as well and we overwrote it okay so we can also uh, where was it on character spawn game controller dot h we can also copy the on character spawn we can just copy that out of game controller dot h the definition of this function and paste it in in my mod dot h so as you can see it's a bit more complex than the tick function because on character spawn also takes a parameter which is of type character because we need the information of which character actually spawned so we have a variable holding all the data about the character cool and then we can copy this line again and put it into my mod.cpp in here we can omit the virtual key so it's just a void and we have to put in the class name with colons in front of the function name then we remove the semicolon down here and then we put our curly braces down here that define the function body okay cool so what we also want to do is what we did in line 19 which is calling i game controller which is, as you remember, in my mod.h, this boy here. So this is our parent that we inherit from. And we want to uh, put our parent's name in here and then call on character spawn on our parent and also pass in the argument p character. So the reason we are doing that is since we now created our own on character spawn function in here, we overwrote the one that we inherited from our parent and thus removed all the game controller logic that is happening on spawning but we don't want to delete the logic we want to extend it so to keep the old logic we call the parents method and thus it uh, can handle all the spawn logic in here and then afterwards we can do our extension of it so if we control click that function we can see what's happening on um, a spawn so it's increasing the health again and it's giving initial weapons. So if we don't call this parent game controller on character spawn function, but we overwrite it, then we would essentially delete those lines and um, yeah, players would spawn without weapons. And I don't know what happens if you spawn without health, maybe they die again and then they can't spawn ever. I don't know, just guessing here. So it's probably bad. You usually want to keep the existing controller logic of your parent maybe you know what you're doing and then you can not call it 
uh, but I highly recommend against for now if you want to change for example the health so let's have a look at that so let's say we want to create our modification and you start with a different health we can just overwrite the health afterwards here we can go like p character and then do m underscore health equals one whatever that's probably not valid code i don't remember by heart how you change the health but since the code is going step by step and the latest line has the most effect this will essentially overwrite it so that's how you would modify it instead of not calling this function at all you can just call your code afterwards and have it overwrite it okay let's put some logic in here let's print a message dbg underscore message my mod and say like character spawn awesome and then we want to remove the spamming message here because we know it works no need to spam anymore okay let's see if that even builds and we run make or however you are building on your system then we start the server and we join as you can see we have a character spawned log message in here because I joined thus I spawned once then if I kill myself and I respawn I can see I spawned again so as you can see the the minute I spawn it says character spawned wonderful uh, not the minute the second it's much more accurate Duh. okay anyways so that's working pretty cool and this is the place where we can now put in our mod logic yeah and that's how you create your own mod controller uh, which is controlling all the game logic and how you override those functions and you can find like all plenty of hooks that you can hook in here in the iGameController which is in the gamecontroller.h and all those functions that are marked as virtual can be overwritten and you can hook in there only the virtual ones though okay so you can hook in all those functions like on character spawn on character death on flag return on entity you know uh, we are going to do that in the future episodes and we are going to actually implement some mod logic in here but today I just wanted to show you the concept of this mod um, oh maybe one more thing we should probably change that to my mod instead of mod uh, because we want to advertise it and we also type it differently it's like my mod that's our branding man you know well maybe let's type it all lowercase yes it looks so good okay and we don't want a modification with teams so if you would want a modification with teams we can remove this boy and then it would activate team play but yeah teams are for uh, social people uh, or whatever whatever anyways uh, i hate teams so we don't make any teams in my mod Ugh. Uh, whatever anyways so this is how you create your mod and um, yeah so let's uh, comment it quickly to recap what we learned in the previous episodes um, you don't have to do that but uh, i will here and then use some git to um yeah to show off some git and it's pretty cool so uh, we can do a git status as you can see we have all these changes that we made in this episode um, and I'm currently on the branch my mod how to create a branch and how to create a fork and whatever I showed that in the previous episode so if you don't want to use git you can close the episode now I will just do a quick comment okay so let's do a git add uh, sorry uh, so let's do a git add dot dot which um, we'll take the folder one above so um, as I told you git dot is the current folder but if we do a git add dot we are currently in the build directory which means that we will only pick up the files in here and it already yells at us whoa there are no files in here whatever because as you can see those files are all prefixed with a dot dot since we are one folder above and then into the source directory if that makes any sense so we want to do a git add dot dot if we are inside of the build directory if you opened a terminal inside of the um, inside of the root of this repository you don't have to do that so if we were to do a cd dot dot and change into the t words uh, source repository where all the folders are like build source and so on we can do a uh, git add over here 
Anyways, and then we can see in git status that all those files are green and then we can do a git commit to uh, describe our changes and we do like uh, create my mod controller. Cool. And then I'm going to push that since I never pushed to the branch on here. I want to do origin master git push minus u origin master first. Um, that pushing part only works if you have a git remote setup. And as you can see, I have plenty of remotes here, but uh, my remote origin is pointing to a fork on GitHub that is owned by me. So now we have this stuff on, uh, on GitHub. So if I go into my browser and I go to github.com slash children slash keywords, you can see I have the, I have plenty of branches here because like this is my main fork. I do a lot of stuff here. Um, I have my branch, my mod, which I don't, where is it? Uh, my mod. Oh, I didn't want to do git push origin master, but git push origin my mod, of course. Cool. And now we have my mod over here. And as you can see, it says here, create my mod controller. And it has all the changes here. Now public on GitHub. Awesome. Um, yeah, so that was a quick recap on uh, Git and GitHub. Uh, sorry for the small typo here, git push u origin master. We definitely want, don't want to push to master, but like to uh, our own branch. Okay, so that's it for today's episode. And in the next episode, we are going a bit deeper on controllers.